our world and beyond space in partnership with the European Space Agency. It's all hands to the pump. This is a serious business. There's no real competition here. The varied dishes from different countries will be eaten with relish by the students doing the cooking. These shared moments of conviviality also have an educational purpose, learning about different cultures through gastronomy. This is a very special kind of international university. We cover everything. We cover the scientific, the technical, we look also into the societal aspects, what can space bring to society. We even dare to go into uh, aspects like space and ethics, uh, space and religion, space and art. We are not afraid to, to go into the broadest sense of what is our student going to be confronted with in his professional life, with space as a main emphasis. Ilkirch Grafenstaden, a few kilometers from Strasbourg. This is the heart of the ISU, the International Space University. On the campus, they're making the most of the spring weather, playing a very active game of frisbee. The 50 students here have at least a postgraduate diploma. They've all studied different subjects and they come from all over the world. My name is Jeremy Webb. I'm from Ontario, Canada. I'm a big fan of the uh, astronomy point of view. No, 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 not an astronaut. Just to work on on the human space activities. My name is Heather Henry and I come from Toronto, Canada. Again, Hugo Costa from Portugal. I'd like to be able to make a living being an astronomer, <laughs> if that's possible. I'm Diego Urbina, I'm from Colombia and Italy. Ladies in space. Um... There's a lot, a lot of space out there where we are destined to go. It seems to inspire people and it certainly inspired me. <laughs> The ISU was started by three academics from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 1987. Following international offers of support, it was decided it should be located in Strasbourg. Right from the start, the ISU was given huge support by a well-known figure from the world of science fiction. I'm glad to know that the university continues its philosophy of space education based on the three I's. It remains firmly international. Its work is highly interdisciplinary and its faculty and students are truly intercultural. Walter Peters is the current dean of the ISU. He's seconded by the European Space Agency. Of course, this is a private university, but it still needs financial and structural support. This is also the guarantee of its true accreditation as an educational institution. A major sponsor is ESA, followed by NASA, but we also have CNES, DLR, so the national agencies. The second group is the space industry and the space sector itself. There is a need to have a little bit of a rejuvenification of the uh, younger workforce. So the industry is very keen on having us choosing people and trying to select them. The courses at the ISU are an eclectic mix. This course is a practical exercise at the concurrent design facility, the CDF. It's run in exactly the same way as the real thing at the heart of STEC, the Centre for Technological Research at the European State Agency. The lecturer is Russian. He used to work on important space missions, for instance, at the Mir station, Buran and other Soyuz space launches. Today you are here had a look at how we will try to design or so-called design first iterations of a remote sensing satellite with an optical payload and with resolution order of magnitude one meter. They are working in the presence of a customer. Uh, and customer in that case, time to time, can agree or disagree with uh, their decision making. For this session, I worked on structures and thermal systems. Each of us will take a one role like, uh, in terms of the structure, the propulsion, um, the payload. And so if you add some more propellant and it needs to be cryogenically cooled, I need to know that so that I can add some coolers or some heaters to make sure everything works together. We'll try to ask our students to speak in the same language. It's not only the same broken English, but it's also some kind of a, a language to understand different experts in different fields. It's very difficult to, to, to provide a communication between scientists and lawyers. 
between manager and engineer. It's one uh, aspect. But second one, very difficult to invite, for example, Chinese or Indian uh, specialists to work together with American or European ones. It's a difference in a culture. For nine months, the students will familiarize themselves with everything to do with outer space, from business to the technology of the very smallest satellites. Paula Esteves from Portugal is on secondment from ESA. Since coming to Strasbourg, he's had a major rethink of his career plans. Uh, antenna from the satellite. I have a special fascination by satellite navigation, but now here at ISU I had the possibility of getting into getting to know much more of space mission design and uh, men's space flight and all this and all the even even law uh, right now I keep my options completely open because uh, this university has shown me a new world. <laughs> Paolo also supervises the operational material. For instance, here he oversees a complete mini-satellite tracking station. In fact, the emphasis on maximum practical work is an integral part of the program. Kaupo is concentrating on tracking the signals of a mini-satellite built by Japanese students. He's part of an international network of surveillance woven into various universities. He doesn't necessarily plan to spend his career purely on space. Probably I'm going back to Estonia right now and try to give this uh, experience I have gathered here to as many people in Estonia as possible. So that the knowledge is not, yeah, probably teaching in your university. Starting my doctoral studies there and doing teaching also. By European standards, these studies are expensive. 26,000 euros for nine months in Strasbourg, plus another three months in another country, which varies from year to year. But most students get grants from their governments, universities, or the ISU itself. We are not so fixed like an academic university, classical one. We listen to industry, we listen to the agencies, and when industry and agency says, listen, the world is changing, adapt your program, we do it. So our program adapts itself much more rapidly than in a classical world to the changing environment. And that is something which, I, in my opinion, is an asset for our students because they are more prepared for that changing environment. The meeting of staff and students over some tasty food is also a way of learning about each other and of applying the motto of the ISU, the three I's, international, interdisciplinary and intercultural. This motto could also be applied not just to these students, but to all those who are involved in some way in the domain of outer space.